Hey, what's up creators? I'm Nico from ProductionCrate.com. In our last tutorial, we showed you how to create fake cloth wind in After Effects. And to show off the effect, Chris and I shot this cool anime power-up sequence in this empty parking garage. I figured this would be a nice opportunity to talk about sound design and my general process, and hopefully you guys can pick up some of these tips and tricks and use them yourself to make your projects more awesome. I like to start my sound design by watching the scenes and kind of taking mental notes about what sounds I should be hearing as I'm watching it. So as I'm watching it, I'm taking note of where it's taking place, uh, what's in the frame, what might be outside of the frame, and how far everything is in relation to the camera because the camera is the audience POV. It's going to be hearing every noise that you see and don't see. So in this clip, we see Chris walking into a concrete parking garage. We see the energy sort of start to billow from his hands up to his shirt. And then that eventually all culminates in a big anime power move with his mouth open, presumably screaming from just the intensity of it all. So let's start off with the environment that Chris is in. He's in a public parking garage. It's concrete, it's very urban industrial. So it's not going to be completely silent. You're likely going to hear some sort of city ambiance, maybe some cars or two. We also know that because it's a parking garage, the surface that Chris is walking on is a hard floor. So how his feet will sound walking on the hard concrete ground is going to sound way different than if he was walking in like a forest or in a desert. For this scene, I can get all of the sound effects that we need from Sounds Crate, so I'm going to go to our footfalls category and download some walking outdoor sounds and some city ambient sounds from our background sound effects category. Now, if we play both sound effects without any editing or mixing at all, everything's gonna sound too loud. We're gonna hear cars driving by and honking, even though we don't see any of that in the frame. And we're not right next to Chris's feet, so his footsteps shouldn't sound that loud. So we're gonna set both of those sounds relatively low in the mix, and we're gonna keep the footsteps a little bit higher in the mix than the ambient city sounds. For the next part of the shot, this is where we start to hear kind of the energy and the wind building up from Chris's hands. So I'm going to Sounds Crate to pick up some wind flying tracks and lay those into the mix. I'm also going to drop in an anime energy rise sound effect, but I'm going to right click and adjust the speed and duration so I can get those slow down oscillating kind of wavy sounds. If you want to play the clip at 1 4th speed, just change the speed percentage to 25. And if you want the pitch to stay unchanged, you can check the maintain audio pitch tab. Uh, lastly, I want to add one of my favorite sound effects to this clip, tornado. It's kind of this perfect discordant noise that you can play around with. Just throwing the effect on by itself, it's a little too bassy and a little too intense, but slowing it down by 20% and cutting out some of the low end with the high pass filter will give me a more subtle turbulence that I'm looking for. This effect is gonna become the showcase of the scene, so it's gonna take a louder, more significant presence in the mix. So where the footfalls and the background sounds were kind of on the low end of the mix in the minus 30 dB, this is probably going to be more in the minus 18 dB range. In the shot, you can see that the visual effects sort of gradually come into the frame, so I'm going to have a sound ramp that starts silent and slowly builds up. You can do this by creating volume level keyframes and just start low, like something like minus 30 or 40 dB, and slowly work your way up to zero or plus 10. But for time's sake, I just like to right click at the beginning of the clip, apply a default transition, and adjust the duration accordingly. Uh, now for this medium shot right here is when we start to see Chris's clothes start to billow and we could just hook up a mic and a recorder and just take a shirt and wave it around and record some authentic cloth waving sounds. But for time's sake, I'm just going to drop uh, some miscellaneous cloth drop sound effects from Sounds Crate and stack them on top of each other. We kind of want these sounds to sort of blend in with the aura sounds, so not too high but not too low either. And now we have the power burst part of the effect, which is where you can really play around with the sounds you use, depending on how you imagine the transformation should sound like. Some of my favorite sounds to use for an effect like this are anime explosion energy, anime lasers, sci-fi impact, anime aura, and anime burst. 
I'm also going to throw in a fire sound effect, a sci-fi swarm, and an earthquake for the aura sounds and kind of the idea of the environment is shaking. We also see a tiny little bit of electricity going around Chris's torso, so we're not gonna forget about that and add some sparking lightning. Funny enough, for Chris's scream, we actually didn't record him screaming at all. Instead, I dropped in one of our injured man screams from Sounds Crate, <laughs> slowed down the clip while adjusting the pitch, and added some delay and reverb. So you can customize these effects to your liking, but these are the settings for the delay that I use, and this is my preferred reverb preset. This is gonna be the loudest part of the video, but if you look on the right at the audio meter, you'll see that we're going into the red. This means that the audio is clipping, so we're going to adjust all of the sound effects until we get something that doesn't quite go over zero dB. This last bit is optional, but I found that it helps me a great deal when it comes to doing the final mix for my sound effects. In our project window, I'm just going to right click the sequence we've been editing in and create a new sequence from clip. This will essentially pre-compose our big audio collage into a single audio track that we can edit as a whole. In the audio effects, select multi-band compressor and adjust it to the broadcast preset. This will more or less mix the audio to be more level, but if certain sounds suddenly become too pronounced, you can go back to the original sound comp and decrease the volume of those sound effects accordingly. It's in this pre-composed track layer that we're going to add our reverb, since the area that we're filming in is spacious and it has hard, flat walls. Flat walls like parking garages and caves and cathedrals are gonna have a lot more reverb than something like a well-furnished living room or like a closet full of clothes. For time's sake, let's just set it at small room reverb. Now that we have all of our fully organized, we can use this sequence to start laying down some music and sound design elements from Sounds Crate and change the levels in order to not obscure all of our hard work. And we're done. So that's my general process. I hope you found it informative or maybe at least interesting. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video or found it useful and leave a comment below if you wanna see more videos like this. Thank you all so much for watching and remember to make it awesome.